What is a perfect number? Well, if n is a perfect number, then all of its factors, including itself, will add up to 2n. The sigma function I'm using here simply means to add up all the factors of n. So for example, 6 is a perfect number because 6 has factors 1, 2, 3, and 6. Add all of those up and you get 12, which is 2 times 6, and therefore 6 is perfect. This is a simple definition, but perfect numbers are actually pretty rare. The first couple are 6, 28, 496, 8128, then from here they just get increasingly ridiculously large. Some 2000 something years ago, Euclid proved that any number of the form 2 raised to k minus 1 times 2 raised to k minus 1 will be a perfect number so long as 2 to the k minus 1 is a prime number. By the way, prime numbers that are 1 less than a power of 2 like this are called Mersenne primes. In the 1700s, Leonard Euler proved that all even perfect numbers will be of this form. Together these proofs make up the Euclid-Euler theorem. These actual proofs are readily available on the Euclid-Euler theorem Wikipedia page, and they're very concise and do a good job showing that the theorem is true. What I would like to do in this video is provide some intuition as to why it's true. Let's start off by looking at the perfect number 28. I'm going to represent 28 here by 28 blocks. Notice that we can write 28 as 4 times 7. Equivalently, we can write 28 as 2 to the k minus 1 times 2 to the k minus 1, when k is equal to 3. So let's partition our set of blocks into chunks, each of which have 2 to the k minus 1 blocks, which in this case is 7. Notice that we will get 2 to the k minus 1, 4 in this case, of these chunks. But remember what our goal is. We want to show that 28 is a perfect number by showing that all of its factors add up to 56, which is 2 times 28. I'm going to show this by representing all the factors as blocks, then adding them up. Let's go back to our one row that we made. Each row will represent one factor of 28. This row adds up to 28, which is, of course, a factor of 28. Hmm, I noticed that 28 is divisible by 2. So let's go ahead and add a second row, which is half of 28. Okay, great. Now the second row represents the factor 14, which is also divisible by 2. So let's go ahead and generate a third row by dividing 14 in half. And it's actually no coincidence that our perfect number was divisible by 2. Remember we started with the two factors, 2 to the k minus 1 times 2 to the k minus 1. The first factor is a power of 2 and the second factor is odd. This means we will always be able to divide the perfect number in half exactly k minus 1 times. In this case, k is equal to 3, so we can produce two additional rows, each of which is a factor of 28 that we got by dividing by 2. You might notice that we can almost arrange all the blocks to form double the original row, which would mean that our number is perfect. Of course, we're still missing a few factors. The sum of the factors that we're missing is 7, or exactly one big block. But remember that for every factor we got by dividing by 2, there is a corresponding factor that will multiply to get 28. So for 7, there must be another factor of 4, since 7 times 4 is equal to 28. For 14, there is a corresponding factor of 2, and for 28, there is a corresponding factor of 1. I'll add the new factors 4, 2, and 1 to the illustration, each represented by small unit blocks. Notice something special about this? Since we got the first rows by dividing by 2, then the remaining factors will all be successive powers of 2, starting at 1, 2, 4, and going all the way up until 2 to the k minus 1. And this summation is equal to 2 to the k minus 1. This can be shown by a pretty straightforward proof by induction. Also, those of you familiar with the binary number system will recognize this fact. And this is where it becomes important that 2 to the k minus 1 is a prime number. 
Since 7 is prime, we know its only factors are 1 and 7, both of which are already accounted for in this process. Therefore, all the small blocks we generate will only come from the powers of 2, so we can be certain we'll end up with 2 to the k minus 1 small blocks. By the same proof, we can know that the total number of big blocks will also be 2 to the k minus 1. Since the first row has 2 to the k minus 1, then the successive rows each have a decremented power of 2 until we reach a row with just one big block. Notice what this means. Each one of our big blocks holds a value of 2 to the k minus 1, and we just discovered that all of our little blocks add up to 2 to the k minus 1. So now, in addition to our 2 to the k minus 1 big blocks, we can form one more from the little blocks. This puts our total big blocks at 2 to the k minus 1 plus 1, which is equal to just 2 to the k. And remember that each big block holds the value 2 to the k minus 1. So if we multiply the number of big blocks by their value, we get 2 to the k times 2 to the k minus 1, and factor out a 2, and we'll end up with 2 times 2 to the k minus 1 times 2 to the k minus 1. And this is double our original number. That proves any number of this form must be perfect so long as 2 to the k minus 1 is prime.